All right, everyone, we are ready to begin. So let's start with our song for this morning. Source of love unto us all. Enlighten us and help us hear your call to bear your love out into the world and celebrate God's wondrous holy child. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to us and all things shall be well. Where in the world do you find love these days? I'm going to read from Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 55. And last week, we, our scripture was... Um, was Mary visiting Elizabeth, and uh, when when John hears um, Jesus in the womb of Mary, he kicks for joy, and then Mary says the following: "My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for He has looked on the humble state of His servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed." For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abram, Abraham and to his offspring forever. When we feel invisible, ineffective, too small to make a difference, the Holy Spirit invites us to be God bearers and we find love. Let's pray before we begin. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being the God of love, the God who showed us first, who continues to make the first move um, to a people who are so rebellious, to a people who are so um, disobedient. Lord, you, you showed your love by making yourself the lowliest of all, um, a baby born in the lowest of uh, settings. And yet it was your will uh, to do great things, just as Mary said, uh, for the people of Israel, but for all the people in the world to be reunited with you, Lord. God, how amazing and wonderful it is um, that you would desire to be united, reunited with us uh, in our rebellion. And Lord, we come together and just one more time, we just want to acknowledge you and praise you um, that despite um, that we acknowledge that you have continued to chase after us. Um, help us to, to realize that you are all we need, Lord. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise, and we are going to sing some songs. And this song, My Soul Magnifies the Lord, is a song that we have sung before, but not many times. Uh, and it, it is based off of the Magnificat by Mary that she 
that she sings out. So yeah, I just invite you guys to sing the song with me.
Let's declare him holy. Good morning. The verses for 
today's offering comes from come from the first Timothy chapter 6 verses 6 to 8 but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and we cannot take anything out of the world but if we have food and clothing with this we will be content every year during this season people make kind of an analysis of how this year went by and after that they make their new year resolutions the following year I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna do that and so on and so forth when I do that and I go through all the months of this year and reflect on what I've been through and how God has been with me and my family all this time and list all the things God has done for us during this year I can't help but just be thankful and be filled with immense gratefulness for his goodness toward me I mean I completed my master degree on time which in January to me was impossible I had to do my research paper to finish and it wasn't going anywhere not mentioning tens of other assignments which seemed like mission impossible to be done all of them by the middle of April and I got a full-time job just days before the school year started which by the way they say that without being a supply teacher for a few years you cannot get a full-time job as a teacher and I was prepared for this kind of scenario I'm sure that if you would stop now and try to think about how God was with you during this year and the same thing would happen to you as well. Try to think now how God was with you and how he has answered your prayers and how you saw his hand clear changing your situations. If I learned one thing by being a human is that being content is kind of hard. There's always something better we want to do. There's always something better we want to get. There's a better car, a better house, a new mobile phone model, and the list goes on and on. This verse reminds us today that we need to stop and prioritize what it needs to be prioritized and opens our eyes to learn to be content with all God has given us. God bless you, friends. Let us pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this beautiful day. Today we would like to pray for our pastors, elders, and deacons of this church. We pray that you provide them with your wisdom, love, and serving hearts, that they lead personal examples to all other people around them. Father, I pray for a spiritual awakening here in Canada, and especially in Toronto, that people may, may fear you, love you, spread, and share the good news to each other. Father, today we have infant baptism. God, I pray that all the babies baptized will know you as their personal God, whom they trust, love, and serve you wholeheartedly. Father, as we continue to pray for our leaders, I would like to lift up our civil leaders in Toronto and Canada, that they may administer justice to walk humbly and give favor to your people. Guide their hearts to be a better servant leaders according to your will. Father, we lift up our Downsview community. We pray that our community open their hearts for you and give our church the desire you have given us and direct us on how to, ch how to share your good news to them. Help us to be your true witnesses in this community. Father, it has been such a hard one and a half years of this COVID virus in our world. This virus has brought many spiritual, financial, physical, and mental struggles. We know the struggles around us, which we humbly lay it down to your feet for your guidance and direction. It is truly not easy to act, even though we are praying to you right now. We pray for healing for those individuals affected by this vi uh, COVID virus. Through this all evil that has been planned to destroy, we pray that goodness to be brought up out to the surface, that we may proclaim and praise your planned goodness. 
We pray against the spirit of fear that comes daily through people and news that we are reminded that we have won the battle because you are always in, in us supporting, protecting, and loving us. Father, we pray for all these requests that you may hear from our hearts and lips. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Good morning still, actually, that's true. <laughs> All right, so one more week until Christmas. Very exciting. I know that there's been a lot of um, scares about the new Omicron variant and stuff like that, but I hope that you guys can somewhat still meet up with family and enjoy uh, the Christmas season um, with loved ones. Um, we have a Christmas service coming up on Saturday. So it's supposed to be at 11 a.m., in a joint service with the high C in the sanctuary. So as of now, it's still happening. Um, however, because of the new, you know, increases in cases and stuff like that, um, the, the elders and uh, Pastor Jew are going to be in discussion today about whether that is still happening. So hopefully by the end of today, they'll come with a decision. And then we'll let you guys know, hopefully by the end of the, d the day or sometime earlier this week. Um, so keep a, a heads up for that. Um, uh, infant baptism is also today um, in the KM service, so it's at 12 p.m., but we're welcome once our service ends to just kind of enter kind of around 12, right, or 11.50, 11.55. So if you would like to go see that, please join that service around 11.55. I don't think any of our – Jacob is getting baptized. Oh, amazing. So we should all go and see <laughs> Woohoo! Awesome. All right. Yeah, please join us f or join the KM service for that around 11.50, 11.55. Um, in the new year, uh, which is coming soon, surprisingly, around the January 2nd to 8th uh, week, we will be doing a week of fasting and prayer. Um, the idea is to just start the off the new year with, you know, fasting and prayer, um, just as we kind of reflect on the past year and look forward to the new year. Um, and we will hopefully be doing a conclusion kind of meeting on January 8th. Um, what we're going to call it Encounter with God Day. And it'll be just a time to pray and worship together. Hopefully in person, we'll see what happens around then. So we'll, we'll kind of keep you guys updated on that. But hopefully, um, at the very least, we can do this week of fasting and prayer on our own time. Um, more details to come in the new year. Um, but that is also something to look forward to. Uh, another new thing that is happening right now, we're currently transitioning to a new offering platform. So I know you guys are used to using the website, and there's kind of like a little section there on the website to give. Um, we're actually moving to a new platform called Rebel Give. Um, and just because there's been some issues with the other platform in the past, there's been some like weird things happening. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but I know there's been some things happening. Um, so Rebel Give is, I think, more streamlined and a little bit more smoother, hopefully. The only thing that we need to kind of be transparent with you guys about is that there is a transaction fee. In the past, the transaction fee was kind of absorbed by our church, but now it will be kind of passed on to the giver. It's 1.9%. It's not very much, but just something to think about as you're giving. Um, and this new platform will be available as usual on our website, which we are actually also updating right now. Um, it's the same address. Everything is the same. It'll just look a little bit different. Um, and there will be a section where Pastor Andrew will be doing blogs and stuff like that. So hopefully it, it's a place where we can be a little bit more interactive and some place that you can actually go and get up more updates, live updates. And I believe that is it for our announcements today. So I just want to invite the scripture reader today for the passage reading. Today's scripture reading comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God to us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's a great day to be alive. Um, and that's when you say it as a slogan, um, doesn't make sense. But when you say it in a way that you know that you could be on the other side of eternity, uh, that's a great news that we still breathe, we still talk, we still talk with friends and most important we as Christians we can talk to God and um, today I hope that our hearts will talk to God and also hear God speaking and I hope that through as I talk the Holy Spirit will talk to you even beyond my words my invitation is that you can pray to God and say God speak to me I want to hear your voice I want to be confirmed of who you are and what is your will for my life today. That I'm not an accident. My life is not just happening. But you have a plan. Lord, I pray for us to open the eyes of our hearts. May we see what you want us to see today. May we hear what you want us to hear today. May we experience what you want us to experience today. We want it all. Help us not to be picky today. Help us not to, to reason with our fleshly mind about spiritual things, but make us today like kids, curious kids in our hearts, Kids wants to really know what's beyond the veil. We want to know what's beyond the veil. We don't see clearly, Lord. We don't understand everything. Help us today to go beyond what is uncomfortable, unknown, trusting you that you are holding our hands. You are leading us step by step into the place that you want us to be tomorrow, next week until eternity. Use my mouth to say truth today and help us to receive truth today. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today we are in the fourth week of uh, Advent and next week is Christmas. And there are people who wants to debate everything and one of the debates that people have is about if Christmas is true or not, is 25th a real date or not? And to tell the truth, I tell them, I don't care. Because to tell 25th is a real date and if Christ was born, are two different things. If Christ is born, 25th, 24th, and 21st doesn't make a huge difference for me. We choose a date, and this is a long story, how 25th became the date for Christmas, but Christ was born. And it's amazing to think about how God becomes human. I'm a person who came from Albania, a smaller and poor country, for a better opportunity for myself and my family. I didn't choose to go in a place that is worse than my country. 
I didn't. I choose the place that is better. And everybody goes for better. People who are born in poor villages, they go to their towns. And people who are living in towns, they want to go to bigger cities. And sometimes people like me who are born in a big city, they want to go to a humongous city like Toronto, crazy one, from, from a city with 120,000 to this huge one with like six millions. But God did something completely different. He came from his position as king and lord to this tiny part of universe that's earth to a tiny place on this earth that is Israel to a tiny village that is Bethlehem to unknown family to a carpenter home completely against odds and in, in, against what people will do to become famous. In our world, I believe you have seen, like me, all the ads, how to become a millionaire and fast to get $10,000 from one month, one week, one day. All these luxurious ideas that you can become famous and you can have the life that you want. And you know, I joke, I see those things, say, hey, I don't know who is buying. And now we have this story, and we don't know who is buying it. It's impossible to think that a person is living a place of luxury when streets are with gold, when everything is his, to come in a place where people don't like him. T to, to come where they know that they will not accept him. To come and live for 33 years among those people and endure them, and hear their curses, and hear their words against God, and knowing that as he is going to preach the good news, he's going to be ridiculed, hated, and in the end, killed. And he came. I think this story is either amazing true, or unbelievably fake. And everyone needs to enter in this journey. Either we are born in a Christian family or not. Either we call ourselves Christians. We need to have this journey, investigative journey to know if this is true, why? Why he did that? And as Jesus told later to Nicodemus, God sent his son into the world for two reasons. That's why. First, because God loved the world. And you know, when you're in love, you do crazy stuff. Everybody who is or has been in love, you know what I'm talking about. You can get out in the middle of the night in the freezing cold if the other person is calling you. Hey, come, I need you. You say, oh, I'm bad, don't. You say, really? You love me? Yeah. Come here. Right? You do crazy things about the person that loves you or you love. The only difference is we don't know how crazy, how much we can love a person. And this always explained with actions. The real love is a love that is supported by actions. Not cheap words. And more and more I am in this environment when I hear people saying nice words and they don't mean it. They are trained to say lip service. Kids, when they are young and they are fighting each other, they are told to parents, say sorry. Just, just to make peace for the moment, but not to make peace in the heart. Just to look good from outside. And we have this huge reconciliation program in Canada. And sometimes I feel it's fake. Because it's not coming from the heart. It's coming from obligation. Let's look good politically. Let's do some things from outside. Because it looks good for our voters. And it's so much pressure around. 
He's not sincere. He's not like, hey guys, I sinned. People like me sinned before. I'm really sorry. I don't need the photographer behind us to take a picture and say, look, I'm repenting now. Put on newspaper. God didn't do that. Because God loved the world, he came in a strange place like Bethlehem. He didn't come with huge news. He gave signs to those people that were looking for God. And God gave them ideas how to look for him. There are people who left their home countries in the east to find this newborn baby, the king of the Jews. And there are people who are living in Judea who didn't care about this king of Jews. These guys came from far, left their business, left their time, left their families, even get precious gifts to give this king that was born. And there are people living next to this king who didn't care, and some of them even want to, be, to kill him. The human race haven't changed a lot. There are people who love God, people who are indifferent towards God, and people who hate God. They want to be God themselves. I just heard yesterday that, you know, in North Korea will be soon like an anniversary, I think 10th anniversary of the death of the founder, and now they have 12 days of mourning and nobody's allowed to smile. It's like, what? People want to be God. Why? Because they refuse God. And the second reason why God sent his son to the world is because there was no better way to offer the hands of salvation. Because God knows us, and because, because God created this system, and he knows all the rules of the system. If you break it, the punishment, and how you can reconcile. People cannot reconcile with God in their own ideas because they don't know how the system works. That's why from the heavenlies, God designed the way, how it's going to happen. The Lamb of God, the, the real sacrifice, was sacrificed in the heavenlies. The, the, the prophets saw that in faith, in the spirit, that the Lamb of God, the servant of God is coming. He's going to be killed for the transgressions of people that God loved, the creation of God. Love have different expressions. And it's acting out differently because love is not the same for everyone, I said earlier. We all use the same word love. Two people love each other and say, I love you. How you love them? How impossible that all these couples who say to each other, I love you, 50% of them divorce. Because they haven't spelled it, what this L-O-V-E is. I love you because you are beautiful, you have money, you have a future, and I can be with you. Or you are a special person that God has designed to be with me as long as we live together. Because you can make me complete. I cannot use you. Because the body cannot use each other. They work together. But everybody told each other, I love you, I love you. Some people love it erotically because they, they like the physics. Oh, you are so attractive. I love you. And when that physical attraction goes and the person is loving only with their eyes, he's looking for another attractive person because this one is boring now. It's like the same movie you have seen 15 times on DVD. Now you need something different. What kind of love we have? And I think when we hear about God's love, it challenges us a lot because it's different than our love. It's not about to put us in a position that, oh, we are wretched. We are wretched, but it's possible that this wretched life could receive light from above and love from above and love like the Creator. We were created in the beginning that we love, love like God loved. And we lost it. Why? Because we thought what was good for us. Starting from Eve and then Adam. They wanted to, to do what they like in their eyes. 
I want to have this, what I see. Because the, all the ads are coming around me and saying, you are stupid if you are not getting what is there. Another person is getting before you. Be successful. You are a loser. Why you don't do like everyone else? Why you are so focused on doing in God's way? Look where God puts you. Remember? Job. I, when I think about job, I always think about job's wife. I, I can't let it go. Job was a successful person. S super successful. One of the richest people in the East. Imagine he had 500 Mercedes. Benz. He has servants and his house was full, 10 kids. They have party every week. Imagine that. The richest person in Canada and who loved God. And then everything goes one day. And love was tested. The same person was next to him, praising him all the time, being honored to be next to Job. His wife said, you still breathe? You are a miserable man. I don't like you like this. Curse God and kill yourself. I cannot see you like that. I want it to differently. And always, because I'm a married person. And time by when you are married, you have those challenges when you see the other person. Who is this stranger? Staying with me, being in my bed, sharing the, the bank account. Who is this one? And I remember when I make a commitment that I'm going to love her until the end. God's love never changes. It's not like us. So that's why I believe we need to think differently this day about God's love. We heard it. I heard it. We say it. We sing it. The question is, do we experience it? And I cannot create that for you. The question is, do you want that kind of love? Or you are happy with a human type of love. Because when you make that decision, I think your life will be completely different. My question will be today, who is your model? Who is the model of love? Because one person could change the community. Mother Teresa, for example, is well known. She's Albanian by, the, by, by chance. But she's a well known person who said, I'm starting to do something because my heart tells me to get out of my comfort. And she was a comfortable teacher in England or Ireland. And then God calls her to be India. And everybody ridiculed and asked her, what are you doing there? The love of God stretches you to go beyond what is comfortable to you. And she started loving those people that nobody loved. But God loved those people. And she got something from God's love. And went there. Loving one after another. After another. And people ridiculously say, you cannot change the world like that. Saying, I'm changing one person. Because in God's heart, one person is very important. If one person is the only lost human in earth, Jesus will come for that person. You don't need another example to say that every human, including you and me, we are special in God's eyes. God loves me. God loves you. If we grasp that, it's nothing that can stop us to experience what God has created us to be and to live. Only if we know love. God's love. Our inability and lack of experience towards other types of love doesn't make the love of God inexistent. I was not raised in a perfect family. When I think back, I don't remember when was the, play, the time that my dad hacked me. I don't remember. Maybe he hacked me, but I don't remember anything. I've seen other families that their parents were like close with the kids. I was distant. I was ordered to do things. 
I was ordered to do, to be the best student, to be excellent, because I, I wanted, or they wanted me to be an engineer, to honor them, because that's all they know. I cannot blame them. So I was looking for real love. And you go to humans to find that this was missing in the family. And you go there and you're disappointed. Because you figure out it's not the real one. My heart is aching. My daughter told me as we were driving today that is a void in the hearts of every person. That if God is not there, that void will be always there. And we call it different names, but it's a void. Void of love. And we go to find love to other people. And we fail. Because those people are like us. They aren't perfect. And we say, why is happening this? Because that place is only for God. When God is there, everything else changes. And I remember in 94, I heard it here. God loves me. And they changed my life, changed my focus, changed the way now I see myself. I'm not a victim anymore. I'm not the person who stays there. Away. Oh, I don't love. Not. I have 100 people who love me, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I need to go to, to more people to love me. I want to be on the top. I want to be loved by 1,000 people. Because maybe if 1,000 people love me, will be, I feel better. And then you go there, you well, have maybe 1,000 people love you. And you feel empty. Why? Because we have that thing that is only for God, that place. So don't think that just because you're raised in an environment when love was not there, love doesn't exist. Love exists. And love came as human. Some people think that uh, and believe that if Christians, I don't know if you are here, like them say that the only reason that Jesus came is to die on the cross. And my question would be, would be then why 33 years? If the only thing that Jesus came was for that day, why 33 years among humans? What he wanted to achieve in 33 years, he could come. One day, do the thing, tick, tick, tick. that's the only thing that pleases the Father, die the sinless person, kill. I believe that Jesus came because he was a, the only person that could tell people the real, pure love of God. And people today struggling, Christians struggling. You go to different churches and they talk about different things. They have different practices. They, they talk about God in a different way. God loves all. God loves some. God loves this way. You can come to God only if you do that. So you can have all kinds of explanations. Why? Because they go and see scriptures and try to understand the scriptures, which are, are there to give us instructions, but the scriptures are not the thing that we need to stop. A person who knows only scriptures and doesn't know God is a miserable person because he can kill people in the name of God. He can close the door for sinners, for people who are different than them because they cannot know better. But the person who has experienced God and the love of God, he does the same thing that Christ did. You know, Christ, when he was 12, he left his family and he went and talked with the teachers of the law in the temple. And mother said, why are you going? Why don't you be? He said, hey, hey, first I'm respecting the temple. And those teachers need to hear something from the scriptures that they never heard before. He cared for those teachers. He was 12. And later when he saw people that were sick, he healed them. He's saying, love of God in action. And when he saw those sinners ready to be stoned, what he did? He forgave them and gave a way out. Not only forgiven, but lived differently. And when he saw those tax collectors that was left out as society, he said, I'm coming to your home. He didn't invite them in their home because saying, your home is dirty. My home is clean. I'm coming in your home because when Christ comes in the person's home, he makes it holy. 
when Christ come in my home, in your home, in my heart, in your heart, we become holy. That's all we need. And we feel, as the real Christ comes, the real one, not the fake one. There are many fake Christ. There are many people who have the picture of Christ, but there is not the real because you test by love. If love is there, the real love of God, the sacrificial love of God, Christ is there. If it is like empty theological words there, and love is not there, Christ is not there. It's just a void. Your reflection, but not the Christ. Christ loves. Love invites people to repent. I'm a parent. Two kids. One here is older, and the other is a baby. And Amanda will tell you that how many times I've been so harsh with her, stopping her to do certain things that I believe that was wrong. She could understand that. My son can understand now when I say no. But that's love in action. God gave us laws to protect us, not to go beyond what is good for us. But sometimes we don't. We say, oh, why God stops me to do those things? I enjoy. You know why you enjoy? Because you are sinful. You want to break free from that? Ask Christ. Because you can't. You're going to do that again. Christ can in you. Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ in me. Not through Christ in the church. Not through Christ in the life of the leader. Not through Christ in the concept. Christ in me. He is in me. And because I love Christ, I will not do other things that Christ will not do. And then we have a different perspective. We change friends because of Christ. We change jobs because of Christ. We change the way we talk with people because of Christ. And that's the only way how Christ will be uh, spread in this huge city. Churches are everywhere. Some of them are social clubs. When people hang out because that's a nice place to be. Have chocolate and tea and have somebody said a positive message. A positive that doesn't change anything. Doesn't make any person change. The same person enters, the same person gets out. Because Christ is not there. It's just an agreement between people who say, let's be nice to each other. Christ is not just nice. He's love. And love sometimes asks you to do certain things. And in the sublime ways, he dies for you. So let's think about that. Christ said to Nicodemus, whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but have eternal life. We read earlier in John 1 that whoever believes in him, the word in flesh, will not perish. Is a consequence if we don't allow this love in our lives, we perish. We perish in this life and we perish in eternal life. We shouldn't go there, but we can. God will not take us by force. And one thing that I've been thinking is about being neutral. Oh, I heard this, but you know, I don't want to be crazy like Andrit. You know, it's, it's a choice. I'm almost Christian. You know, King Agrippa heard Paul. His heart said, that's the right thing. His mind said, you know, that's too much. He's saying, almost I'm going to become Christian. Like, I like to be like you, Paul, but not in chains. I want to have a good life. I don't want to be persecuted. I don't want anybody to hate me. So I want to be the good Christian who never says something that bothers people. Let me tell you, a parent who never bothers his kids is not a good parent. The parents who let kids do whatever they want is not a good parent. He's an afraid parent. He's an insecure parent. He's a parent that maybe they didn't have good parents in the past. They didn't know how to do. But he's not a good parent just because he's positive and saying, hey, kid, do whatever you want. Whatever in, in a sophisticity we have in our hearts about love and good parental roles, I believe today 
we can think and see to Christ. And we can let Christ be the one. We can let Christ lead us. So don't be neutral today. Don't say, I heard this message, it's a good message, but thank you very much. I'm going to live in the way I want. Let me finish with Philippians 2. What do we need to do with this kind of love? I'm going to read Philippians 2, 1 to 11. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who thought he was in the form of God, did not count equally with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So friends, God's love is calling us today. What are we going to do? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that your love was not only in empty words. Your love was not only expressed in rules and regulations, do and don'ts. But you came. You came. You didn't direct us from outside. You didn't give us a Zoom call what to do. You just came. You became present. That was your present for us, being here. And in this Christmas season, there are so many of God that have no clue what has happened. They just like the lights, they like the joyful music. Even sometimes us, we like to do the same. We like the superficial feeling. And we expect for this week to be longer because something special about this week. Lord, I pray for us and for this city. May we experience your presence, O oh Lord. Grace us to, to see you. You gave the news to the shepherds, simple people, no theological background, and they saw you. You called the wise men from far, and they saw you, and they all worship you. And there are so many religious people who heard about your being born and didn't care to search. Oh Lord, I pray that we, we become so simple having knowledge or not, bound simple and come and to see you. How we can be born in this city. That Christmas is not just a, a business idea. It's not only lights in the house, a tree, but it's you, your presence, your love. I ask that, O oh Lord, that the church becomes now your love in action. Help us to be who you want to be to this dying world, to this world that is 
aching for love, the real stuff. And forgive us, O oh Lord, every time we fake it, every time we look like Christians and don't live like that. I pray this Christmas, we, Lord, in this church, and those who are listening later online, I pray that we become sincere and say, God, God, what I should do now. I pray that in your name, Jesus. Amen. That's right. So we're going to sing one more song. Sing Love Came Down. As we sing of his incarnate love, uh, let's just recommit ourselves once again to him.
Say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. movie that I've seen several times about Martin Luther like down and knowing that he might face death because he chose to believe truth instead of that Yeah, such a powerful reminder when we understand the love of God and say, there's nothing better for me to have. So thank you for being here, and I will encourage you to be prepared for this week of prayer and fasting. Um, let's encounter God. Let's say, God, I'm here. I'm yours. I want to experience more. So make time that week not to do other things. Don't plan to do things to meet people and to do stuff. Just try to have less things that week to be with God. And doing the benediction as we close. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, and the blessing of God, Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen and amen. Thank you for being here, and uh, I hope to see you later at the baptism of Jacob and other kids who are going to be baptized. Bless you.